and welcome back. Now this week I'm doing a special SMD project, namely this one here that I've put together over the last couple of days. It was supposed to assist with my SMD soldering skills. <laughs> yeah, and um, well, it does more than just tell the time actually. Um, it um, got a couple of other tricks up its sleeve. Oh, here we go. There we are. 26 degrees centigrade in this office. And it's April the 18th, that is correct. What else can it tell us? Saturday. I was wondering what day of the week it was, I must admit. Good, OK. So let's rewind the clock to a couple of days, back to my workshop, and uh, see how I put it together. And welcome back. Yes, I know this is a slightly different video to what I normally do, because I'm just about to start building this kit up. And you can probably guess what it is by looking at this bit over here. JLC PCB offers custom PCBs with fast, reliable delivery. But today I want to talk about their SMT and PCB assembly from just $2. Let's have a look what that consists of, shall we? So as you can see here, the PCB and SMT assembly is available from $2. How do they do that? So normally there's a $7 setup fee, but in this case they're going to give you a voucher so you don't have to spend that money. Great. All you do is pay for your components. Simple. PCB SMT assembly from $2 from JLC PCB. Why don't you try them out now? And you can probably guess what it is by looking at this bit over here, because I've started to unpeel paper and unpack components, and I thought, whoa, stop, stop. If I'm going to do this, I might as well record it. And what I can do is speed up the video as I'm, as I'm well, after I've built it, to show you what it is and how quickly it went. And, uh, well, OK, first of all, let's have a look where I got it from, how much it was, and how long ago it was that I got this, because I actually bought this as an SMD practice kit. Um, and I never actually did anything with it. I've just unpacked it this very minute. And uh, it says, hardly any soldering skills required. There's just a few SMD bits. As you can see, there's some SMD LEDs here. And uh, chunky they are too. Is that in focus? A bit difficult to tell. <clears throat> so let's have a look, first of all, what it is I'm doing and how long ago it was I ordered it. So you can see here, this is what the, the kit is I'm actually building. It's a rainbow clock, which means all the elements can be... Uh, changed in different colors. I don't quite know how it does that. Perhaps it's just automatic. Um, but it does use a 3231, which is the, um, well, the deal maker for me. If it had been anything less than that, I don't think I would have bothered. So a 3231, as you know, is much more accurate than um, other real-time clocks that you might want to buy. So you set it once and it probably will keep the time excellently over several months. So that's that's one reason why I got this. But the main reason I got it is because it's um, a practice kit for SMD soldering, which, if you remember, look at this date here, look. I mean, it says here, February the 18th, 2019. Well, now it's April 2020. So it's a whole year and two months since I've ordered this, and I haven't unpacked it yet, so now's the time to do it. And the reason I ordered it is because at the time, you may remember, those of you who have been watching my channel for some time, around about January 2019, I decided to go down the PCB route. I've got, to, I've got to work out how to do these PCBs. And, uh, well, as you know, some of my initial and early attempts were slightly less than optimal. <laughs> yeah, OK, OK, yeah. But they did get better. But whilst I was doing it, I thought, well, I've got to learn how to solder SMD stuff. The trouble is things caught up in the meantime. I'd already got a practice kit from Banggood, learned how to solder a few components, resistors, capacitors, and um, even quad flat pack chips. Um, and I thought, oh, OK, I'll do that soon. And I never actually got around to it. So let's just go back to the workbench and have a look at the stuff that's in that kit and uh, see how easy or difficult it's going to be. OK, so now we know what it is I'm doing. Yes, a huge clock that somebody, even with my eyesight, can see. Um, the circuit board, as you can see here, all these little bits on this side are the surface mount LEDs, right? So, and you can just about see they make up the digits, don't they? There's an eight there. But on the other side, I thought, hello, what's going on there? We got two. Um, that's a quad flat pack chip. Looks like a 32 pin. There's a little uh, dip one there. Uh, and then there's a few other bits. There's even a microphone. I think, what, what is, what's the microphone doing on here? Is it some sort of sound to lot? I don't know what it is. I can't remember, as I say, it's, it's a year and two months since I ordered this, so I've no idea. But if we look at the uh, components, okay, you've seen the LEDs. There's a lot of these to solder on. 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 per digit. And there's four digits, so there's a number of these to, to solder on, which apparently is simplicity itself, according to the instructions. Yeah. And in the component bag, and we'll, we'll get these out as I do it, there's a, a flat pack um, chip in there somewhere yeah and there's there's another one as well anyway we'll get all these out and, and as i do it, i don't want to get them out now because then they'll get lost because i won't be able to finish this in one sitting and, oh it comes with a sort of a well a case is perhaps too strong a word but there's two bits of quite thick plastic actually that's quite thick and that's the that's the back one with all the cutouts we'll sort it all out as we get to it we'll leave that bit for later that's the eye candy bit isn't it first of all i've got to get soldering so well i'll bet get on with it then Right, so what I'm doing here is um, soldering the rest of these LEDs like I would a surface mount device chip or something, right? So a little bit of flux on each of the um, contacts and using my gull wing, you see this here? This is very slightly concave. So the solder basically goes into that little hole there. Um, the flux of course burns all off, which is why you've got to put extra flux on the um, chips below. So there you can see there's just a smidgen. It looks an awful lot actually on this picture, doesn't it? But it's not. Mind you, if you want to see a lot of flux, go and watch um, Lewis uh, Roth Rothman. He's the Apple repair expert and does a million videos and stuff. I think he's got shares in flux companies or something because it's swimming. And believe me, I don't think you can ever have too much flux. You try saying that quickly. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is solder this now. Now what you'll see is, once I've got some solder on my um, soldering iron, so what you'll see here is that um, I've only got to touch it. So the solder on here, uh, on the end of this out of focus tip, but as soon as I touch it on here, let's do that one at the top, you see it just sucks it in. Look, you see that straight away. Let's fix that one as well. That was a bit nasty one, wasn't it? No, that, no that's, that's soldered straight away um, because the action of the flux and the hot solder just makes it wick in, really. Let's do another one. I'll show you again a bit more. Bit more solder on the uh, solder on, but not too much. It doesn't need huge amounts here, does it? Right, here we are then. So um, let's do the top one first because that's not, I don't think that's been soldered. None of these have been soldered. So just touch that on there. Oh, we've got a bridge, look, got a bridge. We can clear that out, that's not a problem. That's the first one I did. That might, no, it won't clear by itself. That just needs a tiny bit of um, soldering mic on there, which I just happen to have close by. Because all I'm going to do is hold this over the top of it um, and squidge this on it basically just put it on there sucks it up you can see it sucking it up and there we are clean sucked up some of the flux as well flux helps the um, soldering work even though the soldering work has actually got flux in it or should have if not just get a bit of flux and smudge it into the wick before you use it i've had to do that with some cheap chinese stuff before now no offense of course to the chinese okay so that's what i'm going to do all the way around Right, so it's clean-up time. Uh, what I'm using is isopropyl alcohol, I think it's 99% or something. And uh, you can see this here looks pretty manky, doesn't it? All the flux, some of it's gone a little bit brown. So all I do is, is wash this. So if I can line it up on the... Um, there we are. There's my horsehair brush. So all I do is rub it all over it, get the bristles in between the legs. So you can see that looks coming up quite nice. 
Well, over the, all four of them, there's a little group of four here. You can't actually see all four of them because the microscope's zoomed in a bit. But anyway, uh, just go over those, make sure the flux is gone. And then put um, a white cloth kitchen towel or something like that over the top. And then as if by magic, tra-la, clean. Clean enough, anyway. No, it does look clean, actually. Let's uh, go back to the main video camera and you'll see that the whole board is now clean. Right, so here we are. Here's the whole board, all cleaned up. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Now, I fully expect there to be a little bit of rework on here. You know, the occasional one that isn't perhaps quite soldered properly, even though I have been under the microscope for each one of these, but, well, it's easy to miss and you're not quite sure sometimes if it has made a good connection. But I think these will do for now. Now, the other side of the board, yeah, it's got those uh, two surface mount ones and uh, a few little tiny capacitors and resistors and whatnot, some sort of voltage regulator by looks of it, a couple of capacitors. Nothing too big, but I'll show you what I do. Now, let's assume this was um, an 80 mega 3 to 8p, as found on the Arduino Uno. Um, I'll show you how I solder that, which is pretty much how I did the LEDs in the end. It it's just seems to be a lot simpler. Watch this then. So you can probably just see on that corner, look, there's a little tiny chamfer and there's a dot there under the tweezers. See that dot? And that's what's supposed to learn up with here. We'll put it under the microscope, then you'll see it a lot, lot better. Right, OK, this is um, the chip under the microscope. You can see there's a very definite dot there now. And that chamfer on the corner there. To the naked eye, well, if you've got good eyes, I think you'll be able to about to see it anyway, but uh, I'm just struggling a little bit. But that's fine. So underneath the microscope, it's fine. Now you can see the feet compared to the pads. The idea, and what I do for all the um, 3 to 8 little boards I've made, is to line it up, not like this, this is a bit wonky at the minute, because I'm trying to film as well, but trying to line it up a bit like that, it's not perfect yet, but as perfect as I can get it, and then just tack it on one pin in the corner, so basically uh, that pin there, you get it, just, just tack it with the solder, you want to make it a proper solder joint, but it doesn't have to be perfect because we'll go over it again. Then go over to the other corner, because you can see at the moment, you see, it's not square, is it? So having tacked one corner, you'd square that up, something something like that, I guess. Tack that corner. Be absolutely sure that all these other pads are now fully central, which they're not at the top. If you look at the top, they're not actually fully central. So that would not be acceptable. It'd have to move a tiny bit uh, to the left, now, a bit like that. Now that's better. Yeah, it's not not bad around there. You see, and that's pretty good actually. If that was now tacked, both in the bottom left-hand corner and here in that top right-hand corner, you go, yep, that's perfect. Well, let me do that, and um, then we'll come back to the other bits. All right, that's that one tacked. Now down here as well. I'm now going to tack this one here. Now you notice I'm feeding in the solder for here, but that won't be for long. That's just for now, while I'm I'm getting it all sort of set up because we do need a little bit of that will do even though it's over two now we just don't care right don't get hung up about this that's fine the point is having done this now this won't move i mean no matter what it's, it's, it's stuck isn't it right so now we'll have a quick check make sure everything else is is set yeah they're all absolutely done fine good so now what i do is get my little syringe of um flux so I'm going to do a Lewis Rossman here and absolutely um, flood it with flux. I mean, all right, don't go too mad, but I mean, you know, you can't have too much according to him. So we're going to do this with all the pins across here. Doesn't that syringe look absolutely ginormous? Right, now the idea is, because I'm using a gull wing soldering iron tip, that one with the hole in it, well, not the hole, the, um, the cup, I suppose you'd call it. What I'm going to do, first of all, clean the tip, my little thing, right. So I'm going to put some solder on here, like that, and then just run it down here, like this. Now, it doesn't matter if it bridges like that, because sometimes you can just wipe it away, like I'm trying to there, but it doesn't always work. Oh, there, that's gone now, you see, look, up the side. Now, there's a huge big bridge there, look. That's because I put too much solder on, right? We don't care about that. We'll just leave that where it is for now. We're in the middle of soldering, not fixing issues like that. Oh, 
another little bridge at the end there. I don't think um yeah that that bridge just keeps moving to the last pin that I touch. Doesn't matter, we'll, we'll forget that. I've probably got too much solder on the soldering line to be quite honest. I'm not paying enough attention to that. A little bit less solder perhaps on here this time. Let's have a look. tra -la! See, no bridges this time because less solder on the soldering line. I've been overloading it. You see how quickly it solders as well, look. that's all the flux helping that. So that one's done good as well. Uh, right, let's just see if we can get rid of this bridge with the solder iron. If not, I'll use some desoldering wick. Oh, good, there's the last two. Here's the desoldering wick. Always, always get quality soldering wick, by the way. Um, just press that on there and it's gone. There we are. Perfect, look at that. Oh, is that another bridge up there? It is, look, that's why it's good having a microscope. All very good eyes, one of the two. I tell you, trying to film this and do it at the same time. Talk about a challenge, eh? Right, still there. Now oh, I've stuck the solder we can't <laughs> Right, enough. Is that still... Right, I'm going to sort that bridge out. Can you see there's a bridge there? Just, just... Where is it? There, where my soldering iron's put. There's a little tiny bridge in there. Normally you can just get your soldering iron in and, and make it move, but it doesn't want to this time. So I'll, I'll not overheat it. I'll do that with some solder wick in just a second. Previously I showed you how I cleaned it, and I'm going to do exactly the same with this. So I've got my little horse hair brush, cut down I might add. Cut down to make it um, shorter and therefore stiffer. All I'm going to do is uh, flood these with isopropyl alcohol all over it and basically the isopropyl alcohol dissolves all that flux and if there is our tiny tiny little bits of uh, solder sitting around stuck in the flux it sorts them out as well so let's have a good wipe of that now there we are that's cleaned how does it look top one looks all right right one looks good bottom one I can only just get it into shot there, yeah, that looks okay, no bridges. And the left one. Yes, well, there we are, it looks alright, doesn't it? And uh, basically, if you've never done what I've just done, and let's face it, a year or 14, 15 months ago, I had never done anything like that at all. And to begin with, yeah, it's all hard work and you press too hard on the pins. So when you're doing it, you mustn't press on... Oh, cat hair, that's Benny for you. You mustn't press on these pins here, you'll bend them. You want to run uh, the solder across here with the solder ball sort of touching all these, and it just sucks it up. I've still got a cat hair in there, for goodness sake, Benny, you get it everywhere. Right, um, practice makes perfect. Um, as I say, Banggood and AliExpress and all these people, they do kits like this one here that you're looking at, but that don't, that don't do anything, but they're for practice only. And they give you some chips, just like this one. And um, they'll make you actually do the soldering and go, you know, get on with it. And once you've done that a few times, you think, oh, that's not too bad, actually. That's what I did. And eventually you get good at it, eventually. you just got to do it more. I mean, practice makes perfect. Actually, there is something here that uh, you probably want to be aware of. This is the DS3231 chip. If I angle it slightly, you'll, you'll see the writing there. Look, you can just make it out. Let me get the focus spot on. There we are. It says DS... 3231 on the on the upside down admittedly but there it is now this hasn't got a dot over here at least not one i can make out unless that's supposed to be it difficult to tell even on the microscope but more importantly this semicircle here that always is at the top where pin one is over this side so there's the dot so i want to get this chip oriented so it's like that basically uh, which I will do with my tweezers of my fat fingers and I'm going to do it exactly the same way just tack it on one corner go down here make sure it's aligned first obviously and uh, tack it down here as well not touching that first pin just yet because we've only just put that on there that's what's holding it together all right now we can go back to the first one yep they all look okay what did that take? Yes. A little bit more solder, don't need a lot.
There we are. That's a lot, lot easier than a, a quad flat pack. Right, I'm going to do the other components now. As if by magic, it'll all appear ready soldered. Okay, I think I've, um, I've just been through checking these components. Not the most brilliantly soldered, I don't think, quite frankly. But I suppose it's a bit like a dog that talks, isn't it? You shouldn't be wondering how badly he talks. The fact you should be wondering that he can talk at all. And I feel it's a bit like that with me um, soldering at the moment, I must admit. Even though um, it's better than what it was. My eyes, that is. Okay, I think, I think I've gone through this. They all seem okay. No short circuits, that's, that's the main thing. Is that soldered? Is that... What is that one doing there? Oh, look at the fluff on the end of those tweezers. I don't know, it looks a bit unsoldered to me. I'll do that one again. So let's get a bit of solder on the end of this soldering iron. And just touch that. I'm sure it is soldered. Oh, maybe it wasn't. <laughs> what a mistake to make. There we are, right way round. Uh, what did the instructions say? Plug it in. Okay, well, where's, where's my USB? I had one plugged in here ready somewhere. That's better. Right, so this plugs into uh, that one in there. And what's going to happen? If there's, a, if there's smoke coming out of anywhere, this is going to be ripped out instantly. Oh, beep, beep. Oh, colour. Hang on, let's Alexa, turn off video light one. Uh, let me turn that one off. Flicker, flicker. I think that's because I've got it on programming mode on my video camera. Zero, 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 zero. Well, that's, yeah, I suppose that would be the default, wouldn't it, on the time, when you think about it. Um, yeah, of course, some of these things are in different colours. I don't know if you can quite get that, but there's, oh, it's gone now. That, that is red, but that's blue, green. These are all blue over here. The colon's flashing. Oh, that one just changed. That's now red. These are now green. So it's this multicolour thing that's going on. Let me turn the um, exposure down on the video and we might... No, you see we can't. I'm stuck now. If I turn the, the exposure down I have to go into manual mode and then you get all the flickering. Alexa, turn off workshop lights. Oh, oh there we are. That's probably better. Yeah, you can see that now. I know there's still a bit of flickering but I think you're getting a better idea. Not quite in focus is it? Well, it's not supposed to be in focus actually in the end of the day because there is some there's a white piece of paper to go over it, then that transparent piece of plastic, and then and there's that black thing in the middle as well. So oh there we are, goes to two. Now what is it doing? Twenty-six degrees centigrade. In my workshop, probably is actually, even with the window open. 101. Ah, that's first of January then, isn't it? Because we haven't set the date and time yet. It says something else there, I was too slow. 0002. Okay, this is, these aren't white by the way, these these are all blue over here, but it looks white on my video. You can just about see the white outline, or oh, they changed to red. Okay, multicoloured. It's looking okay, actually. Um, let's just see if I can adjust the exposure, because I think you'll get a much better view. Well, you're, you can see the colours a tiny bit better. They are quite bright actually in real life, and they keep changing, that's the trouble. You're looking at it and it keeps changing. And it doesn't flicker like that in real life. What's it going to say now? Oh, 26 degrees C again, yeah. Okay, well, I think I've got to go to the next stage, which is putting the thing together in its little case and whatnot. Saturday, uh, it's not. And it's three minutes since we've switched it on. Okay, enough of this waffle. Let's, um, let's get on. So that's it then, all done and dusted. I've screwed the case together, the um, the big black bit of perspex and the two white things front and back with the white diffuser paper in between. Um, that was okay. I did have to put in here um, some spacer nuts on that bolt to keep this back panel flat, otherwise it was being uh, squished down at the ends because you've got chips here, haven't we? And it was causing it to bow, so I did that. Um, I haven't got a battery. This is a 1220 battery. So I've had to order one of those if I want this time to keep when I unplug it. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, that's about it really. Um, oh yes, yeah, so there's one dodgy connection here. You might not be able to see it, especially not when it's displaying the time. So that LED there, which you can probably just make out as being green, is permanently green. 
well it's either off or green it doesn't go to any other color so i suspect there's a, a soldering fault on that particular led or the device could be faulty of course yes that's much more likely isn't it yes um well apart from that though it's all pretty good i mean it's all hanging together the touch sensitive pads at the back for the um, menu selection they can be a little bit tricky to use but they they work well enough um, we're on time settings at the moment so if i um let me just dim the lights again alexa turn off video light one oh there we are uh, so if i there we are, i can that was the time setting that's the date uh, we shot past alarm there that's one of the tricky bits i was telling you about that's a uh, format that's f m t mm. uh, what else we got display i can't remember now you got the speed the color the midpoint loads of stuff even voice control i think that's for shutting up the alarm actually there's an alarm setting on it as well so yeah all that is um pretty good actually um hour i've not seen that one before i said what, what does that mean hour oh 24 hour or whatever yes or single hour okay good right that's it then all done and dusted as an smd project did it work well to be quite honest i don't think this would have been ideal for beginners i've got to say because i've been doing it now for well over a year on and off i mean it's not a huge amount of smd stuff i've done is it what do you mean you can tell how rude um but uh, i wouldn't have liked to have done this when i bought it back in february last year this would have been too too much I've had more experience since, since then, especially these um, quad flat pack things. Well, the quad flat pack there and the um, the SOIC one there. So I'm I'm okay at doing those now. Um, I don't think I'd like to have done those a year ago though. So apart from that though, if you think you can you can put this together, it's a good little practice. It took me well, I suppose a day and a bit to solder it on. But then the LEDs, soldering all those on, the bit I speeded up. That just took forever, forever. And then you realise halfway through that, oh dear, you've got to align those LEDs absolutely centrally. Mm. Otherwise you have problems soldering the other side because the pads are basically not big enough. It's like trying to solder an AT Tiny 85 into an area that's only designed for a narrow bodied AT Tiny 13. Can be done, but requires some precision soldering. So yeah. But anyway, this is all working. I'm going to put this in a dark area of my workshop and at least I'll be able to tell what day of the week it is because frankly with this lockdown, who knows? What's today? Sunday? Tuesday? I don't know. Great. Okay, thanks very much for watching. If you've got any questions about SMD soldering, do put them down below and any other comments. And in the meantime, see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.